All right, MVRV, what is it, how do we use it, and why do we value it so much as a leading indicator among our sentiment community? Uh, to begin, the definition of MVRV is it shows the average profit loss of all the coins currently in circulation given the current, current price. Uh, in other words, what we're trying to do is measure the average trading returns among all traders in a specific interval of time, whether that be within seven days or 30 days or 365 days, we have several different time frames that we offer to the sentiment community. Uh, we look at MV as the market value, uh, referring to the well-known capitalization. And then of course, RV would be the realized value, which is an alternative to market value, uh, where instead of current price, every coin is multiplied by its acquisition price. Um, there are time-bound uh, explanations, uh, change metrics, all sorts of different things that you can find here on the Santiment Academy. But uh, as I am, I think most of you are as well, we are very visual when it comes to learning how to use crypto metrics effectively. So let's jump into a real-world example here. And this would be the MVRV 30-day interval. And what I'm doing here is moving down the lines that I drew before this video started uh, to indicate where 15% and negative 15% lies. And the reason we like these ranges is because 30-day MVRV in particular, we have found that anything above plus 15%, indicating that trade average trading returns are above 15%, this is a overheated market and we typically see traders starting to get a bit too euphoric and too profitable and often this is when prices tend to correct alternatively we can see that down here is the negative 15 percent opportunity zone line when prices start to re rebound and bounce a little bit now we're looking at a very zoomed out timeline so i'm actually going to adjust this to just the past year and switch up these trend lines one more time. Put this down at negative 15. And in order to make a new line, you can simply go up to the top here, horizontal ray, and then boom, you've got your plus 15% there. So I'll full screen this as well. And we can see that whenever the 30-day MVRV gets way up here, indicating that average trading returns are well above plus 15% in just a 30-day time frame. That's when we typically start to see markets get corrected. Uh, even if it's a one, two week delay, eventually there will be a big local top sending prices down. Uh, often the MVRV will go all the way down into negative range here. Uh, you can see it very clearly. This one happened right at the local top. And yes, we had a second bounce that was the true Bitcoin all time high, but markets were already very overheated here according to multiple different time intervals for MVRV. Uh, and eventually, of course, we saw things drop back down, got into severe negative territory. And this is an example of uh, a major anomaly on the negative side where an opportunity zone presented itself. Uh, and right around here, of course, we had a small bounce and it sort of chopped a little bit. And there were opportunities to sell again at a profit after getting in when other traders were in a ton of pain. And that's what MVRV is all about. You're, you're basically being the market contrarian and selling when other traders are heavily in profit and you're buying when other traders are heavily in a deficit or a loss position. We talk all the time. I mean, no matter whether you're a TA trader or, or a fundamental trader or anything in between or even just from another sector altogether, we all know about the basic concept of selling high and buying low. And it sounds easy uh, as, as a premise, but really when you get into it, you never know whether, you know, this is the high here in early October, or if this is the high when it actually was in mid-November. And MVRV really helps us identify what the true highs and lows are because Bitcoin, you know, as I showed with the six year zoomed out uh, price chart a second ago, it can, it can go up and up and up or down and down and down, but MVRV doesn't work the same way. You'll always see MVRV 
hover around 0%, no matter what the time frame is, no matter how much I zoom out on the Bitcoin chart over time and over the years. Uh, it is designed to always show the true 30-day returns on average for traders. And this is, of course, only the 30-day, but we can look at 365 one day, and we'll show a few other examples of those in just a moment. But really, the, the important lesson of MVRV is it proves that crypto, just like any other sector, is a zero-sum game. No matter how many Lambo emojis and you know people saying we're all in this together, the reality is there are always an equal amount of of profiting and losing going on. Even if it's you know just the top 10% of whales doing all the profiting, it still means that with all the trades and and buy highs, sell lows, it's going to equal zero percent here. Uh, and that's why. When we see everyone collectively way down here at like a negative, what is this, negative 19%, right? That's going to be a time where you can get in at a much less risky uh, time than usual because other traders are already seeing an, a, a tremendous loss to a degree that is considered to be an anomaly. Uh, and right when it did, in this case, in late January, that's when the big bounce happened. And we had, you know, prices go all the way up here. MVRV got high, not quite into a danger zone above this line, but still very high. Prices corrected. It went back low again, not in the opportunity zone, but still very low. And then they went up again into a very close to uh, margin near the danger zone before dropping back down. And then recently we had this May 10th to 12th drop where the 30-day MVRV did go into the danger zone. And so far, the MVRV has chopped a lot, but the MVRV has actually gotten into positive territory. And that's because there was a lot of dip buying and various reasons that, you know, people were not feeling as much pain here as they were on this drop because there had already been so many people selling on the way down. So the average trading returns actually haven't been as negatively affected on this downswing because so many people were already fudding out of Bitcoin. Regardless, uh, buying high, buying low here still would have generated a small profit, and now we're back a little bit on the positive side. Now let's look at some other examples, as promised. We can look at the seven-day MVRV, which is of course about a little under a quarter the time range of 30 days. And typically, we look at only about plus 6% or around negative 6% as good danger zones or op opportunity zones uh, to use as a rule of thumb to add on or uh, take a little bit off of your portfolio gains. Um, we can see plenty of moments where we got very low and then prices rose after it got into an opportunity zone. Um, another one kind of short term here. Obviously, with seven day, it's going to happen much more quickly. And if you're trading on a daily basis, this time frame might be better for you than the 30 day, which is a bit more of a week to week swing trade type of interval. So seven day, you know, the most recent time we actually saw a spike into this danger zone just about a week ago from the time of this recording on May 30th. And we immediately saw a very mild correction. And that's what you're looking for with shorter term MVRVs are mild corrections or mild bounces to capitalize on. Um, so this would be a good example for seven day. And now let's take a look at 365 days. And we can look at kind of the opposite end of the spectrum, a very, very long term time frame we can rely on uh, for more of like a hodling mentality where you're only really adding on if it gets below negative 30% or only taking a little profit if the MVRV gets above 30, uh, plus 30%, uh, clearly you don't see a lot of crosses because MVRV moves a lot slower uh, in, in terms of being positive for like two months straight or negative for three months straight or four months straight like we've seen. Um, but when it does make a big cross, that's when there might be a, a good justification to start changing your strategy a little bit because long-term traders are going from you know euphoria and greed here in the latter part of descent of 2021 and then suddenly they are in fear mode and big pain 
uh, cycles throughout 2022, at least through this first half of the year. So 365 can be very, very useful as well. But the question you may have is, how can we, uh, how can we combine our, our knowledge all into one uh, chart across different time frames? So I'm going to click out of this really quick, and then I'm going to go over to Custom, which is a special template I have, and we'll share these in the description, of course. Uh, the average MVRV here. So let me full screen. And what this pink line is showing is the combined average MVRV of 1, 7, 30, 90, 180, and 365 day MVRVs uh, to see exactly how high they all get together or how low they all get together. And you can see quite clearly when they get very low, these are usually the times when a local bottom forms. When they get really high, which really only happened once in the past six months because it hasn't been a great time for Bitcoin bulls, that's when the local top occurred. More recently, we saw here really in the second week of May, it got to its lowest point that we've seen in the past six months. And actually in the past year, it hasn't been this low. And since this time, calling the local bottom about pretty much 12 hours before it happened, uh, prices have risen at least mildly. And you can see the average MVRV starting to creep up because seven day and 30 day MVRVs and even one day uh, from right before the time of this recording, prices have been bouncing a little bit. So that makes sense. Another thing you can look at is the short midterm traders versus the long midterm traders. This is something our community discovered for us and found that when 30 day uh, MVRV is getting ahead of the 90 day MVRV, like in profit, we'll tend to see a lot of drops in price. When they're way behind, that's when we see a lot of opportunities to buy low. So this is another perspective where you can look at two different MVRVs together. Now, there's also a special metric that we've made called MVRV long short difference. With MVRV long short difference, it's essentially a longer term version of the 30 day versus 90 day MVRV. So it's a, a more zoomed out version where we're trying to find out, uh, you know, the 60 day versus 365 day uh, MVRV and exactly how much the shorter term is leading the longer term. Typically on bull runs, you'll see the MVRV long short difference get higher and higher. And when it really starts to get to historical peaks, you have to be mindful that we might be very close to a local top and then a very big drop down. Uh, and that's exactly what we saw back in December of 2017 for those who were trading way back then. And then of course it, dro it dropped all the way until we got to January of 2019 before we really started to see some extreme negative numbers. And that was an indicator that it might be time to start dipping your toes in quite a bit and do so with less risk because there is so much trader pain that was happening from here to here. Um, we also, of course, see that it jumped right back up in July 2019, and everyone was at that time expecting it to go back up to 20K. I shouldn't say everyone, but a lot of the mainstream was starting to get euphoric here again. And then it dropped back down again, got back up, people got very euphoric, and they were punished for being euphoric once again. So you get the idea. Long short diff can be a good zoomed out way of understanding how two different time frames can be combined to not only validate when we're in a bull run or bear run, but also understand when we're getting to super opportunistic points or super uh, worrisome points based on uh, other traders' profits during that time. Now, we, of course, also have the MVRV divergence uh, model and this is essentially the opportunity versus danger zone and how close multiple assets are getting to either side of it. The higher they get toward this green dash line, which is the opportunity zone, the more justified it is to be in that position with very small risk. Uh, we see, you know, one inch amp uh, compound. Engine, lots of different coins right now are showing semi-underbought signals. And then we even have Celsius and Scale, which are showing as very underbought because there's a ton of trader pain 
that those two assets have been producing as of late. Um, on the other side of the spectrum, we can look at a few assets that might actually be below the zero line, which is Unised Leo, Wrapped Bitcoin, Chainlink, and what do you know, Bitcoin is actually underneath, right? So no matter how much a lot of these assets are edging toward the opportunity zone line, they are still going to be reliant on Bitcoin's success overall. Uh, and you need to be careful if Bitcoin is a little bit under the zero line, even while others are showing tons of opportunity right now, because it means that Bitcoin at any time can drop and take a lot of altcoins that are, have already experienced a lot of pain down with them. So plenty more uh, that can be written about this model. Um, and and you'll, you'll probably see another article in the next couple of months about it. Um, and of course, you have this Sentiment Academy page, which has a very extensive breakdown of how MVRV works, um, how you can make it an effective tool for your trading strategy, whether you're supplementing it with your TA or some other uh, leading indicators on Sentiment, like daily active addresses or whale behavior, things like that. But uh, we're always learning and trying to get better with MVRV ourselves. And we have very consistent discussions with our Sandbase and Santiment community about how to make these types of tools more effective for your trading. So as always, continue to trade responsibly. We're here. Uh, drop some questions in the comments if you have them. And we'll talk to you all very soon.